Hello and welcome to the 66 video in this series program HS Engine in C. So now the search is implemented we're ready to start hooking the engine up to a GUI but before we do that I just want to add in uh, one little thing for this checkup function here and I want to say that if info and bear in mind I've added the info as an argument now into the checkup I've said I want to say if, if info and time set equals true so we have set a time limit and the current time which is get time ms current time is greater than the info stop time so we've run out of time then we'll set info and stopped equal to true and what that also means is we need to check regularly whether we've run out of time or not and we'll do that here so before we increment the nodes in quiescent search we'll do if and info nodes and we'll say every 2048 nodes basically so ended with 2047 which should be all the bits set up until 2048 if that equals zero then we'll do a little checker because we don't need to do it on every single node because remember it's already searching at the moment probably especially with optimizations around a million nodes a second we'll call then our checkup with our info structure there which will then set stopped to true and we'll copy this and we'll also put it in after the call to quiescence here but before the nodes increment here and now what remains to do is after take move is to say that if info stopped equals true then we'll return zero and this won't remember we return, when we return when it's stopped we deal with this in the search position that it doesn't matter we'll ignore everything on this current depth search so we just return straight away from here but it has to be after the take move of course otherwise you get all sorts of fun and games and we'll put the same in the quiescence here so once stopped has been set somewhere to true the tree will simply back up to the root and that means then we'll pop out here after alpha beta so what we need to say here now is if info stopped so before we get the best move or the PV line or anything like this so if we were forced to stop because we ran out of time or later on when we've implemented we were interrupted by the GUI told to stop then we'll break out of the loop here and that means the last PV we printed was from the previous depth and we stored from the previous depth the best move here so we can send that then under here to the GUI which we'll do a later date so that's now implemented there I'm just going to type make and see how many errors I've introduced doing that none good and now let's think about how we're going to connect to the GUI and I've gone here to a website if you type UCI chess protocol into Google you'll come across this website here and I'll just briefly go through a quick description of the main parts so there are two protocols for a chess engine one's called the UCI and one's called export and we'll be implementing both of these in this series one of them is stateless and that's the UCI and one of them you maintain state that is export so stateless means the GUI controls completely the state of the game stateless means although the Wimboard GUI does also control the state of the game you have to maintain the current state so how many moves have happened etc etc between receiving moves from the GUI but that, the difference will become clear when we start input implementing the two protocols so the main points to note are every string should end with a, a new line is ready should be what the engine waits for from the GUI and the engine thinks when it receives a go command and let's move down to here the move format is E2, E4, E7, E5, E1, G1 for cast link and the promotions with a small letter to denote the promotion piece and here we go with GUI to engine so this is UCI to switch into UCI mode is ready you have to reply with ready OK I'm skimming through this because I know the protocol relatively well set options for setting options we won't involve us at the moment register won't UCI new game says clear all tables and go to a new game and here's the interesting part at the start of every move you'll be sent position and then either FEN or start position 
and moves. So if I make a new file here, it could send you position, start position, and that would mean set up the start position. It could send you position, start position, moves, E2, E4, E7, E5. That means set up the start position and then move these moves on the board. It can also send position FEN in exactly the same way. So we could have position FEN and then our FEN string, as you already know, followed by moves, I don't know, E1, G1, blah, 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 etc., etc. So that means we're going to need a function inside our protocol file to be able to pass this. And it means we'll need a pointer uh, to a character to be able to step and jump through and analyze whether we're setting the start position and what moves we have, etc. So if you're not familiar with string passing, that can be a little bit tricky and it's probably the least joyful part of all of the programming of a chess engine. The next thing you receive is you then receive a go command. And search moves will be ignoring, ponder will be ignoring, but here are the interesting parts. We have the white time to go, the black time, the increment time for white and black, how many moves are to go in the current time, time control, which is only sent if it's not a sudden death time control, the depth limit, if any, the nodes will ignore, the mate will ignore, the move time is for if we're searching exactly a, um, a specified time for the move, we'll ignore that for the moment, and infinite is simply to keep going until we receive the stop command. So that means we could, after receiving the position command, receive go, white time, and it's in milliseconds, so three minutes, black time, and the white increment could be a second, the black increment could be a second, something like this. So we would see if the position start position, and then go white time like this, would say set at the start position and think with white and black having three minutes to think each total. And at the moment it could have, say, moves to go 20 if it was a time control where to the next time control we have 20 moves to go for the three minutes. So we'll also need to be able to pass this go like this. And then we receive from the GUI a stop command when we have to stop calculating if in the GUI the users press stop and ponder hit will ignore and obviously quit. So we need to be able to process stop and quit. From the engine to the GUI, UCI OK and Ready OK are what we send in response to UCI and is ready. Best move is what we send at the end of the search. So we'll do that now. So we'll print F and best move with a new line, remember. And here we'll print move and the best move that we found in the search. Copy protection we don't need, registration, and here's another key line, it's info. So depth, the selective depth will ignore, the time in milliseconds, the nodes searched, and the PV, and the score in center pawns or mate. So we'll have to actually put something in to say if it's mate in 4, 3, 2, 1, or whatever. The rest we'll ignore for now. And options we can also ignore. So for an ex there are some more examples, you can read yourself this in detail, but we need to set up to be able to print a line out in this kind of format here. So I'm just going to copy that and inside a comment here, I'm going to paste it there. And now we're going to adjust our printf line here to support this. So we're going to info score center pawns. And then first thing we're going to be doing is setting the score in center pawns. Then we need to be setting the depth with a space, and I need a space here as well. And then we need to be setting, sending the nodes, which is an LD. And then we need to be sending the time, which is in milliseconds, which will have a D. And then we need to finally be sending the PV, which we already have done correctly down here. And the ordering line we can leave on there because it will be ignored by the GUI. So the first thing we need is to move current depth. So we've got best score, then current depth. We don't need the best move. We've then got the nodes. And now what we need is the milliseconds time. And we need to subtract the info start time. 
in this way to give us our time in milliseconds and then we print our PV as normal and at the end our best move. So that's already implementing what we need to send to the GUI as our information and if I now just open up Vice and in here we'll actually before searching here we'll set the info and start time as our get time milliseconds and we'll also set the info stop time equal to get time milliseconds and let's add something big on it's in milliseconds so let's add 200 seconds because it gets to depth quicker than that and let's just compile and run this now or at least make sure there aren't too many errors in it and let's just search and now you can see that we've got the line coming out correctly info score center pawns 50 depth 1 nodes time 0 and here's the time now in milliseconds and the principal variation printing. So that's printing out as the GUI actually requires us to print out. Good, so just to summarize, we're printing our information correctly and in our UCI protocol function which we're starting in the next video we're going to need to implement three functions. One of them will be a UCI loop where we basically have an infinite loop. One of them will be a pass position command where we actually implement this command and then the next one will be a pass go command and we're going to implement those one by one over the next two or three videos. So I hope that's all clear and we're nearly there for watching the engine player game so thanks very much for listening comments questions criticisms welcome as always on YouTube.